Hi, I'm Kent. In this video, we're going to do an experiment. Recently, I've been trying to slip cast holes into my pots, and I've tried a few different things. In a video not too long ago, there was a discussion about a bunch of different ideas. I want to try some of them out. So for some context, I've been working on this form here. This is kind of a moon jar shaped form. And I've been turning these into lamps. So I cut a hole in the bottom, and then there's a bunch of holes on the outside where the light shines out. I've done experiments covering this up with some glaze, getting a rice grain effect. But the challenge I've been facing is getting these holes, and in particular, getting the holes on the inside to work out. When I put the holes in, I wind up getting blowout on the inside of the clay. And while that's the inside of the form, you can't really see it, I really don't want it there. I'm starting to suspect that a lot of this is actually my clay body. It's a very porcelain-like clay, and I think it's just brittle. But I still think there are options I can go with. So in that video I mentioned, I went ahead and drilled a bunch of holes into my plaster mold and I put some nails in there. Basically these are serving as pins. And then the idea is they basically stick in part way and that interrupts the slip from forming in that spot. Before demolding, I can then pull the nail out, leaving a hole, ideally, and then I can pop out the pot with the holes already in them. One of the problems was when I pulled the nail out, there was slip on the nail and that wound up leaving a mound on the inside of the pot or closing it in. One of the suggestions was to basically pull the nails from the inside. And I think that would actually really work. So that way any slip that's built up on the nail would actually go towards the inside and wouldn't close up the hole. The problem is for my ideal form, I can't really get my hand in there. So that's not gonna work for me, but I think it is an interesting idea. Some of the other suggestions were using a different material, something that was hydrophobic. So it repels water. There was a suggestion of using wax. And so I wanna try that in this video and see if that works. The other ideas were around treating the surface of the plaster so it didn't absorb water. So can I put something here on the inside of the plaster so the plaster didn't absorb water and would that create a hole in my form? In the comments, my answer was no, I don't think so, but that's actually what I wanna test in this video. Let's see if it'll work or not. But first I'm gonna explain why I don't think it'll work. All right, so let's imagine we have our plaster form here. And we fill this up with slip. And what's gonna happen is the water is going to absorb into the plaster and then the plaster will eventually get the water and it will kick it out. And so the thought was, if I put something here that blocks the plaster from absorbing, would that mean that the wall that gets formed not form in that spot? And I don't think the answer is yes. And it was because of what happened when I put the nail in. So when I put the nail through the plaster, I wound up with a little buildup around the nail. And so I think I'm still gonna get a buildup here. It may not be very thick, but I don't think I'm gonna get a nice clean hole. So why is this buildup happening? So I think there's a bunch of factors at play. One is slip is liquid, so it will have some surface tension and it will just stick to anything you put into it. So here's my bucket of slip, and if I put my finger in, obviously we're gonna have slip sticking to it when it comes out. This isn't very thick, obviously, but it's more than nothing. So anything, any place I put something on the surface so the plaster doesn't absorb it, I'm still gonna get a little bit of slip building up just like it built up on my finger. And I think this is surface tension. As we slip cast the pot normally, we wind up building up gradually a layer of slip on the inside. And so that means the water actually needs to migrate through the slip as well. So I have a guess that maybe with this thin layer of slip, some of the water gets transported around the edges basically through the slip itself or through the clay as it forms. And so that will also cause a buildup. And then finally, slip is thixotropic, which basically means that it will get more fluid as it gets mixed. And so the converse also happens. As it sits, it will get less fluid. So I think that means that there's more of a chance for it settling out as it sits longer. And I used a nail. People had suggested something like wax, and I think wax will have the same problem. The slip isn't being absorbed into the nail in any way. It's just kind of sitting on the surface. I think, you know, wax or plastic or anything like that, I think basically the same thing's going to happen. It's not going to be very thick, but these holes are relatively small, and there's enough going in that even when I pull it out, that's enough to close in the hole. But that is a hypothesis, and we can test it out. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've got another old mold that I don't use anymore, and I have an old birthday candle. So I'm going to try and basically drip some wax onto the mold and see if that prevents the slip from building up. I'm also going to go ahead and stick this into the slip and pull it back out and see what happens. I'm not going to put the hole through the side, but we can see 
when this sits in the wax for long enough, basically the time it takes to build up my walls, what happens onto the candle is it basically the same as the nail. And finally, I have some pottery wax. This is meant to wax the foot of your pot when you glaze it so that the glaze doesn't stick. But I think this may also work as a resist so I can put it into the walls of the plaster and I can use a brush so hopefully I can be a little bit more delicate in its application. So I've got a lighter and I've got my candle and I think I'm just going to try and light this and drip some wax in. I think this is going to be messy and hard to show you, but we'll do it anyways. Oh, there's one. There's another. Let's do one more. All right. So those aren't the right size, but hopefully that will get the idea. All right, and so now let's try the pottery wax and a brush and see if I can get these closer to the size I'm interested in. All right, and there we go. There's a variety of sizes. One I got a little bit too big, a couple are smaller. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this wax dry and then we'll try slip casting. Okay, the wax is all set up. If I were to do this for real, I would need a better way to apply the wax more evenly, but for this test, it should be good. And actually, I think the variety of sizes will also be informative. So now we go ahead and fill this up with slip. All right, there we go. I went ahead and made this contraption. I'm gonna set this in the top. One is just the nail that I used before. So we have a control to see kind of how much slip gets built up on just the nail. And then I have the candle. Part of it's been burned so it's smooth and part of it's just the regular part. We're gonna let that sit in there. So with my plaster and my slip, it takes about half an hour to build up the walls of the pot. So we'll check back then. All right, the walls have formed. So let's take out our test here. And yeah, we can see slip on here. All right, let me dump out the slip. There we go. So we can definitely see some hints of where the holes are, but they're covered up. Let me go ahead and drain this out the rest of the way. Got my slip drainage table here. So put it at an angle and I put that away from the holes. So this is interesting. So in me just holding this now, it has come off the wax, but it is still attached to the nail. That is a surprise. So I was wrong about this part. There is something to using the wax for the pins instead of the nails. That's interesting. This is why we test things, you don't always know. All right, so I'm gonna let my pot drain for about another half an hour so that in that time, the excess slip will drain out and the pot will firm up and then we'll try and demold it and see what we're left with in terms of the holes. But this is fascinating. All right, this has set up now. So here are the bigger wax spots. And here are the smaller ones I painted on. There's definitely a divot here, but it's not a hole. And I went back and reviewed the footage and I noticed that basically the slip beat it off almost instantly. I'll put in a little clip here. Go ahead and trim this one up. Let's see if we can get it to come out. There we go. Normally I wouldn't handle this quite so much at this point, but this is just a test. So here are the three spots with the wax that I dripped from the candle. And here are the ones that I painted on. Not sure the best way to show this. Let me see if I can slice it open. Mm. 
There we go. So this here is the profile of the candle wax, and it definitely gets thinner. But it's not a clean hole for sure. And you can see where the wax is on the outside, but on the inside, there's just a few little divots. So even the largest one here is just a small little divot. versus the larger ones from the candle wax. And of course now I have wax on the inside of this mold, which would not come out. That's okay, if it actually worked, I wouldn't mind keeping the wax in there, but this didn't quite have the desired effect. So yes, the wax does prevent the water and the slip from being absorbed directly, but as I say, I think it kind of goes around the outside. I think this test here shows that the wax does actually repel the slip, so I was wrong about the hydrophobic nature. So the surface tension, I think, of the slip, it was enough to grab onto this nail, but the wax resisted that. So the wax is indeed, I think, repelling the water in the slip, but the properties of the slip itself are what's forming the dome over the top of this. So that was an interesting test. And so I was both right and wrong, so that's always fun. It probably is worth thinking a little bit more about using wax for my pins going through the form. I don't know how I could get the exact size diameter that I want, and I worry about them being robust enough to be used over and over again. Ideally, I'd like to be able to dial in the size of the holes so I can get them to match my intended form. For this early piece, I like the size of these holes, but it might be worth exploring something larger and smaller as well. And I very much appreciate the comments and the ideas and the brainstorming that happens in the discussions. Since I've taught myself, I've learned a few things along the way, but there's always interesting different perspectives and that's fun. So if you provide a comment, explain why you think it's going to work, because that's always helpful. In the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, let me know. Thanks.